Alrighty, so we've got a pretty cool glitch to look into today. I'm just gonna pull up the video right away. You can watch that. Just gonna walk up to Epona, start pausing, looking for a specific frame. And then on the unpause frame, gets a pretty large push, one that's normally not naturally possible. Which is pretty cool. Uh, this video is from 2019, a couple years ago, by Exodus. So it's been around a while, but we've only just understood how this works as of yesterday. So let's get into it. In order to properly explain how this works, I'm going to have to get pretty in depth into how the collision system works in this game. Uh, because of that, this video might end up being a bit long, but I will include timestamps to try to help with that. So before we get into how the glitch specifically works, I need to go over how collision works in general a bit. Uh, I've got the game up here, it will help with demonstrating things. So high level, this game has two collision systems. The original names for these are BG check and collision check. BG check is the system that handles the scene, so the floor that you walk on, walls that you can walk into, all the way over here, ceilings, and make sure that in general you can't walk through walls and things like that. It also handles a specific type of actor that has more complex uh, collision, but yeah. Now while BG check is very important for the game in general, and it's relevant to glitches like ground clips and just clipping through walls in general, uh, we're not going to be concerned about it at all for this glitch, so we'll just set that aside. Now, collision check on the other hand is what we are interested in. Uh, the system handles actors interacting with each other, whether that be an actor pushing into another actor, or an actor hitting another one, or an actor getting hurt, things like that. So hitboxes, hurtboxes, stuff like that. To make that distinction clear, in GZ, if you're familiar with that, you have the collision menu. Show collision will show you the BG check. So it's all the stuff on the scene, specific actors, stuff like that. Show colliders, on the other hand, is what I'm talking about here. So throughout this video, you'll be hearing me use the term collider a lot. Uh, when I say a collider, I'm referring to one entity that can interact with another collider. And it can do so in various ways. Um, they come in a few different shapes. You can see on screen right now I have a cylinder for Link's body. Uh, there are quads, like Link's shield here. There are spheres, like, a ch like the bomb chew here. And there are tries as well, which I don't really have a good example of. Now, a collider on its own doesn't necessarily do anything. What has to happen is an actor has to specify what it wants it to do, what type it wants it to be. So you can see that GZ is making this clear by the colors. So on screen you can see Link's cylinder is blue and Link's shield is red. If I open up GZ, there's actually uh, toggles for each of these types. So I have hit, hurt, and bump. So essentially a collider can do one of three different things. They can either be hurt by other colliders, hit other colliders, or bump or push. So if I turn on just bump for example, you'll see that Link's body is gray. And you'll see that when I slash, nothing shows because the sword isn't bumping into anything. However, if I were to turn on hit, now you'll see Link's sword and Link's shield. And lastly, if I turn on hurt, you'll see blue. And Link's body is blue because he can get hurt by other colliders from enemies. So in the original game's code, they used acronyms for these. Uh, AC refers to hurt, or the blue on screen. OC refers to bump, or the gray that you see on screen. And AT is for hit or attack, which is the red that you see on here. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to include this text on the screen, just as a reminder, because I may refer to it by its acronyms out of habit, uh, but that's there. Uh, we don't actually know what these acronyms originally mean, but some good guesses are Object Collider, Attack Collider, and Attack. Um, MZX might have a slightly different interpretation of it. Point is, we don't really know. We just know that they use these acronyms to mean these three things. 
So I already mentioned this briefly before, but I want to reiterate that a collider on its own does not do anything. It has to what we call subscribe to a certain type for any given frame. So looking at code briefly, uh, if a collider wants to say have a hitbox active on a frame, it has to call a specific function that says on this frame I want to have AT or hit active. And same for the other, uh, the other three types. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper and explain how these colliders are being assigned to these different types as a frame is being processed. So I've got here a frozen frame of the game. I'm going to try to use an MS Paint diagram to demonstrate exactly how this is being processed. So as a frame is being processed, before you even see it on screen, um, all these actors are going to be updating individually one by one. So let's start with Link on screen here. He's got one cylinder here that we can see, and it is going to have a push active. So he's going to call that function I was mentioning earlier, set OC. And then his cylinder is going to be added to a list of a collider that's going to have this type active. And then it's going to see, oh, he's also got AC active. So it's going to add the cylinder to the list of hurt boxes that are going to be active on this frame. And then we move on to Epona. You can see her head there is blue, so her head is going to be added to the list there. Her head also has gray underneath this that you can't really see, so it would be added to that list. Epona's front cylinder here for her front legs is red, because as some of you may know, Epona can just decimate enemies as she runs over them, and bushes. <laughs> uh, that also has a bump active, Ooh, that would be in this list over here. And then her back legs just has bump, so you'd add one here. So as the frame is processing and all these actors are updating, this list is being populated with all of the colliders that are going to be belonging to a certain type for that frame specifically. So once all the actors are done updating, uh, all the collision is going to react properly based on what type it has been assigned for that frame. Now the important thing to understand is this is only for that one frame. So once the frame is finished processing and everything reacts properly, these lists are cleared. And then we start all over again for the next frame. So this concept of having a list of what colliders are assigned to what type is going to be important for understanding how this opponent push glitch works. Um, and it's also important to understand that each of these lists has a cap. So OC or bump can have up to 50 colliders uh, belonging to that type. Hurt can have 60 and hit can have 50. The existence of this cap is why some of you may know that some actors like these trees and the boulder in the background, you can't see that they have a bump box active because they make sure that link is close enough to it before turning it on because they don't want to fill this list and reach that cap. Um, if the cap happens to be reached on, a, on a, a given frame, the game won't break. If it tries to add more, it will just simply not add it. So with that little bit of a primer on how colliders work, let's try to tie that into how this glitch actually works. Uh, this glitch took a couple hours of banging my head against the wall trying to figure out how it's even happening. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm going to just say why it happens and then try to break down what's going on here. So the issue is that opponent's head collider is being assigned to bump and hurt in a draw function in the game. So what does that mean? This game, and probably a lot of games, make a very clear separation between updating, logic updating, and drawing. Logic updating is when the game is updating the state of different things, things like what it's currently doing, what animation frame it's playing, what speed it is. All those different variables that make up what the game is are being updated. And then drawing is actually putting the things on the screen so that you can see it and drawing usually depends on the things that were updated so that when you press B and Link does a slash, his state is updated and then you can actually see him swinging the sword. Now, in general, it's bad practice to do logic updates in drawing. The separation exists for a reason, like I was saying, because draw usually depends on things being updated. Now this especially becomes an issue because of something that I learned about yesterday, which is that when you pause the game, and when you unpause the game, the game will draw once for each of those, but not update all of the actors. 
So everything is being drawn so that you can see it, but the actual logic is not running. Actors are still frozen. Now, what I mentioned about doing logic updates in draw being bad practice is exactly for this reason. If you're sitting here mashing pause, uh, the game is still drawing, so draw related functions are running, but update is not. If I go over to my desktop here, remember I was saying these functions are what add a collider to a certain type? If I scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see set OC and set AC for joint sphere, which is opponent's head. Now the problem is this function is a draw function. It's really meant to be calculating things for what you see visually. But every time you pause, draw is running. And so each time this is running and adding opponent's head collider to that list. If I use my paint diagram from earlier to demonstrate, if I stand next to Epona and just pause and unpause, for every pause and unpause, draw is running and running the set OC and set AC function. So it's adding Epona's head to this list of colliders that need to be active for that frame. But since update isn't running, it's not being cleared. The frame hasn't fully been processed yet at all. So if I do this again, now I've added two more entries to this list. And I think you can start to see what the problem is here. You could sit here and just keep pausing over and over again and fill up this list. Instead of using the paint diagram, I can also use actual memory to demonstrate this. So this here is the list of bump colliders that are in this list here, the gray one. So, so far, this looks pretty normal. I have C or 12 things in this list to be processed this frame and it's a bunch of various colliders including Link and Epona and things that you can't see on screen. However, once I start pausing, you'll see two entries added that seem to have the same number, E760, and they're just gonna keep going. As I keep pausing, this number is increasing and the same pointer to Epona's head is just being added over and over again. So cool, we can keep adding opponent's head to this list of active colliders, but what does that mean for us? Well, the interesting part is that, at least for bump, OC, uh, one primary feature of this collider is displacement. So you can walk into things, and it will push you back out properly. Generally, it's not, you know, it's not a large push, it's just a little bit. It looks pretty natural. But what happens is you build up these entries of opponent's head and what it's going to do, I can even go to the function, what it's going to do is it's going to loop over that whole list and apply the proper displacement to each collider. It's going to loop over it here and use the count number to see how far to go. So you're filling this list with opponent's head and when you unpause the game and get that push, you're getting that push because it's saying, okay, I have opponent's head here, apply displacement to link. Opponent's head, apply dis displacement to link. Opponent's head, apply displacement to link. Over and over and over again. And this stacks up. So it's important to establish real quick what displacement actually is. Um, I won't get into the nitty gritty details, but essentially it will take into account the size of, of both colliders, uh, where they are relative to each other, the actor's assigned mass and the overlap that these two colliders have and it will apply an offset to the actor's current position with the right displacement amount. So this is not a speed value. You're not giving Link a lot of speed. You're just offsetting his position by a certain amount. This is important to note because uh, Link is still able, Link and the collision system are still properly able to do bounce checking. So you can't you get a lot of speed from Epona and clip through a wall easily. It's not really going to work that way. Uh, Link is still properly checking for walls and all that when updating his position. If this gave a lot of speed, it would be a different story. Uh, we do know from an Exodus video that you can clip through another collider or simply just move past it, so that is an option to explore. So to try to summarize what I just explained in a few sentences, this glitch happens because Epona adds her head collider to the list of active bump types in a draw function instead of an update function. 
and when you pause and unpause, draw is running while update is not. So you can fill this list with opponent's head, and then when you unpause and the game goes to update, it will see many of opponent's head in this list and apply displacement for each one. So a couple of miscellaneous points I want to clear up. First off, uh, this list is not a list of colliders. It is a list of what collider is assigned to what type. So when you pause over and over again, you are not duplicating the sphere for Epona's head. There is still only one collider. What you are duplicating is the entries in the list of what type it will belong to for that frame. Secondly, we've been focused on the OC, the bump, the gray here, but I do want to note that Epona is also adding AC here. So while this list is being filled up, so is this list of active hurt boxes. Now, we haven't found any practical use for this. But it might not even be exploitable, but it's something to note. And also worth noting is that AC has a cap of 60 versus 50 for OC. And lastly, while this glitch is being dubbed as Epona Push, uh, this does work with most horses in the game. Uh, Epona, which its internal actor name is EN Horse. Uh, there's Horse Normal, the normal horses that you see that aren't Epona also have this glitch. Um, Gen's Horse and Zelda's Horse, which you only see in cutscenes, also technically have this glitch, but you can't really do anything with it because you can't really interact with them. Um, Interestingly, Phantom Ganon's horse does not have any colliders at all, so it does not have this bug. And it should be noted that there could be other actors which are adding their colliders in a draw function, which can be exploited in the same way. We still have to go through and look. Or there could be other logic updates in general that could be exploited by pausing over and over again. So there is still some more research to do. So to close out this video, I want to show a practical use that has been found for this glitch already. Uh, save state uploaded this video. You can see that they will use it to reach the fire arrow platform. And they also conveniently use the memory window to show that list I was talking about. So you see it will walk up, get hit by opponent's head and just start pausing. Skip a little bit. Pausing over and over. Now you see this number incrementing. That's entries for opponent's head in that bump list being added over and over again. And you can see that pointer being duplicated as well. And you'll see that once it reaches 32, that's 50 in decimal. All of that displacement is going to be applied in one go and push all the way over to the fire arrows, which is really sick. So that's everything. Uh, I'm sure it was a bit confusing. I tried my best to explain. If there are any questions, please feel free to reach out on Discord or whatever, and I will try to clear up any misunderstandings.